Welcome to Living by the Word with Pastor Leroy Joseph. Well, praise God, what a pleasure and an honor it is to come to you again today. Thank you so much for all those of you who are listening, wherever you are. Good morning, good evening, good night, good afternoon, however you say it. Remember this, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And you know, for those of you across the world who see me for the first time, you saw my wife for the first time, and you might be wondering where did they come from? Well, originally we come from the Caribbean. My wife from the great island of Trinidad and Tobago, the nation of Trinidad and Tobago. I was born from in Dominica, the Commonwealth of Dominica in the Caribbean. And we are now resident in um, Florida. And so we just want to tell you that it is an honor for us to be able to come to you, that the word of the Lord is being fulfilled in our lives to go into all the world and to teach and make disciples of all nations. We do want to say a very special thank you to Dr. Joseph and, um, and Adam for the opportunity to be on the Cross TV, reaching out with the message of the kingdom of God. So praise God. Don't forget to be in touch with us, and we really, really want to encourage you to, to get in touch with us because we love you. All right, we are going to continue on our teaching, and we really hope that you are being blessed. And, you know, if you sing it for the first time and um, you've never heard the previous, you did not hear the previous teachings, we want to encourage you. You can, you know, you can go back to the Cross um, TV on YouTube or our network, Pastor W. Leroy Joseph on YouTube, and you can have all the teachings that we've been doing. All right, we want to continue, like I said, our teaching on our foundational scripture is John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32. Now, early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide or continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, becoming a truly true disciple. To become a truly true disciple, it means that you go from the process of becoming a believer, which is putting your trust and your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and allowing yourself to go through that process by submitting to the word, the teaching of the word, for it is the truth, the truth of the word that you will know not just here to know, to become acquainted with. And that's why God has given you teachers, has placed teachers in the body to make disciples from a believer to a disciple. You see, there are those who go out and preach the gospel and people believe and they are saved. But there's a, the teachers that God has placed in the body who teach the word, explain the word, give you an understanding, and you believe, like Jesus was a teacher that brought people from just becoming believers into becoming disciples, living in the third dimension. And so last time when we spoke to you, uh, we were dealing with the subject, and coming to the end with the subject, on the characteristic of a truly true disciple, one living in the third dimension. Today we want to begin dealing with the character of the word. You see, he says, if you continue in my word, 
If you continue in my word, remember, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The word of God is a light and a lamp. The word of God is spirit, and we will talk about that. So it is an understanding, having an understanding of the word of God. All right, and so we, we need to know what is the character of the word. Is, is the word um, is something that you and I can put our confidence in? Because, see, it is that word, it is like that airplane, you know, that take us from one place to another. We begin one place and we're going in the airplane. Can we trust that plane, the character, or, or whatever it is that is taking you to where you want to go? The word is. Remember, the word is the key in the process of a believer developing to become a truly true disciple. The word is the key. David is saying, thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. The Bible tells us that God has exalted his word above his name. In the word you have life. Let me say it again. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. See, the Bible tells us the word, number one, take this down, those of you who are taking notes, I want you to take notes. The word is spirit. The word is spirit. Why is the word spirit? Because the word comes from God. God is a spirit. In John chapter number 6 and verse 63, Jesus said this, The spirit gives life and the flesh accounts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. I like that. The words that I've spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. The, the one translation says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are life. It, it, it is life giving. It goes beyond the natural. It is spirit. So that's why we say, when you're living in that third dimension, that third dimension is living in the realm of the spirit. And this is where the word of God operates. The word of God functions. Yes, it can affect the physical, the body, the soul. But the word of God, the spirit, spirit it, it, it has that potential. Jesus says that I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. What gives life? It is the word of God that gives life. Word of God. The word in the Greek is the word for the word logos, which is the written word. Something said, including thoughts. So you notice that God spoke words. See, whatever was in the mind of God, God spoke. See, it's not until what was in the mind of God became words in the mouth of God that we begin to see things happen. And Genesis over and over say, God said, let there be, and there was. God said, let there be, and there was. So the word has the ability to give life, all right? The word. So we have what we call the written word, the Bible. This is the written word of the Lord. The thoughts of God that is released. So you and I, we know what the mind of the Lord is. We know how things, certain things are going to happen because we have the word of God. We have the word of the Lord. And so we can read that word and we, 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 we know what the mind of the Lord is. And then God has given us teachers to give us an understanding of the word of the God. So we will know 
what to do. It's like Moses. Moses got the word from the mouth of the Lord and he brought it to the children of Israel. He wrote it down and he said to them, if you obey those words, then you will be blessed above all others. The word of the Lord has the ability to bring the blessing. So we have the Logos, the Rhema, the Logos, which is the written word of God. Then we have the word is the divine expression of God. It is the divine expression of God, as we say, so that whatever God thinks or what God is thinking, God reveals it to us by the spoken word. The word is the main key to the, the believers living in the third dimension. It is the spirit and truth. Deuteronomy 8 and 3 says, we live by the word. We keep the word. To live by the word, it means to be nourished by the word or to be made whole by the word. To be nourished by the word, to be made whole by the word. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitude of the heart. I need to read this again. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. It says, the word of God is alive and is active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, it, it, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So there are a number of things we learn there in this verse. Number one, the word of God is living. See, the word of God is not some book, some book that we read and we can go find it in the library and read it again and again. But the word of God has the properties to be able to give life. It is alive. It is living. It, it, it works. Jesus said it is like, you know, is when you put it, it's able to work and to activate and cause that thing to grow, to develop. This is the word of God. It's alive. Why? Because God is alive. You see, God is alive is not like some president in the past who made some statement and has now, you know, he's dead and the word is irrelevant. The word of God is alive because God is alive. Jesus is the word. Jesus is alive. The word is powerful. It's powerful. The word has energy. The word of God is effective. The word works. The word works. In Isaiah, he says, you know, the word shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I send it forth to do, and it will prosper in it. There's an energy in the word of God. And that's why when that word comes into your life and it abides in you and you abide in the word, it creates an energy in your life, a spiritual energy that you can go beyond the natural human limitations and accomplish great things for God because you're living in that third dimension. The word of God is sharp. The word of God has the ability to separate, to make a difference, to make a distinction. It says it makes a distinction between the joint and the marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. 
The word of God makes a, a difference. Dividing soul and spirit. Or dividing soul from spirit. The word of God. It's able to distinguish what is of the soul and what is of the spirit. That's why you find so many um, believers. They are confused as to what is spirit and what is soul. And so many are living a soulish life. Because there is the absence of the word of God. They are not yielded or surrendered to the word of God. But when the word of God comes in your life, it divides. It makes a, 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 a difference. It creates a distinction between what is soul and spirit. In Psalm 119, verses 105. David said, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. The word is a lamp for my feet and a path for my path. So if you are walking in darkness, all right, and you find yourself stumbling, stumbling as a believer, what you need to bring into your life is the word of God. Because the word of God would lighten your path. It's a light. It illuminates. It brightens. Are you in darkness today? Are you in some form of darkness? What you need is to bring God's word into your life. It's a lamp. It's a candle. It lights, you know, it lights into, bring light into your spirit. Here's what Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27 says. The human spirit is the lamp of the Lord that sheds light on the one, on one inmost being. So in our one translator said, the human spirit is like the candle. A candle. And the words light it. It light it and it brings light into your life. The darkness is dispelled. The use of the word of God is the key tool in overcoming temptation. Jesus used the word when tempted by the devil. The word of God is the key to overcoming temptation because Jesus used the word when he was tempted by the devil. In Luke chapter 4, verses 8, chapter 4, verse 4, verse 8, verse 12, over and over in the tree Temptation, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. When the devil tempted Jesus, Jesus said to Satan, It is written, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, over and over he mentioned it. In Psalm 119 and verse 11, it says, The word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. I hid my, your word in my heart that I will not sin against you. Remember, the Bible says out of the heart flows. You know, out of the heart flows the issues of life. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If the word is in your heart, then your thinking motivates, is motivated from the word of God. So you think the word, you Act the word and you live victoriously. That's how the disciples live. The word has cleansing and sanctifying power. The word has cleansing and sanctifying power. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 to 26. Husband, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her to make her to make her holy, 
cleaning her, cleaning her and washing with water through the word. In John chapter 17, verse 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Your word is truth. Remember, we don't live by facts. We live by the truth of the word of God. And there is a sanctifying power. There is a saving, a, a, a cleansing power that separates from the unclean because of the word of God that is truth. God has placed his word above his name. In Psalm 138, the B part, verse 2, the B part, the Amplified Version says this, For you have exalted above all else your name and your word and have magnified your word above your name. I say to stay, thank God for his word. Thank God for his word. And going back to our text, Jesus said this, if you continue in my word, then you will be my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth. The truth will make you free. Do you want freedom as a believer? Do you want to live a life free from the entanglement of the word, living in the third dimension, in a place of victory, then you have to continue in the word. Go through the process and you become his disciples. Truly true disciple. It is the word that will save you if you're not saved. Make a commitment that I am going to receive the word of God and I'm going to live by the word so that I be, ev become everything God wants me to be. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus Christ, you who are not saved, that you will turn your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever you are listening, pray this prayer with me. Oh God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me clean. Make me a child of God. I receive Jesus as my Savior. And for those of you who are believers, say, Lord, I make a decision. Jesus says, if you will abide by my word, then you will be my disciple. I want to be a disciple. And so, God, I thank you for your word. I will submit myself to your word. I will submit myself to the teacher that I become a disciple. If you have made no decision, whether to give your life to Christ or to go on to become a truly true disciple, please contact us. Contact me at livingbytheword at disciples.com or at our website www.pastorw.com lj.com it's on the screen you can call us 954-254-5068 and please we need your support we've got to pay for this broadcast we need your support some people think we're being paid no we've got to pay for it thank god for the great deal we have received but please you have our cash app um, information it's the dollar sign P-A-T-L-E-E-J. That's P-A-T-L-E-E-J. And we will receive your help and we will appreciate it. No, we love you. Until next time, remember this. This is living by the word. A man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Goodbye and God bless you.